Everybody. Um, the Emergency National Security Supplemental Appropriation Act of 2024 was released yesterday, 13 yeah, well, hours ago? Uh, sometime last, last, last night, you know. Um, in which there is a $118 million giveaway. Billion dollars. Billions, yeah, yeah. Billion dollar giveaway uh, to various uh, agencies, and it is mainly to secure the south border and to give sup uh, support the war efforts um, in Europe and in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, as we said before, there is some crumbs of employment immigration stuff in it. And I'm Sam Shehab with the law firm of Shehab Burke, and with me... Brian Burke from that very same place. Very excited today. Yeah, minor um, introduction about us. We are immigration attorneys. We practice immigration law in um, Columbus, Ohio, Dublin, Ohio. Uh, our clients are from all over the, the country and all over the world. We do employment immigration and family immigration. And we do this every week at 6 o'clock Eastern time to discuss uh, things, items of interest. Yeah. Um, and today we're going to talk about the proposed bill, Brian. Yeah, this is the border released. bill that we've been we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. You know, w was there going to be anything employment related in it? You know, that's really was really a topic, and well, it turns out there is. There is know? employment. And there is employment stuff in it, and just to let people understand, uh, this is only a bill. This is not a law that passed by Congress, but it carries a lot of momentum. Because well, it's exciting because it is based out of a bipartisan, you know, fought agreement between Republicans and uh, Democrats in the Senate. You know, uh, they said we need to do something on the border, and this, this uh, here, this is only a part of it. It's about three hundred some pages long, the whole thing. But this is the result. You know, this is what they agreed upon. They said everybody, uh, everybody said this is something we can live with to fix the problem at the border. Now, this is just a proposal. It is a draft of a law It is that everybody thought they could pass. And what's really up in the air right now is, can it pass? And yeah. the narrative we were talking about last week was, you know, um, the, ha people, the Republicans in the House have been calling, have basically voiced opposition uh, to it. But it has uh, the leaders of both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party in the Senate uh, not opposed to it. Yeah. So the uh, so the Democrats are in favor because it's the, the president bill. The Republican they're saying it protects the South border. Yeah. It has a lot of money. It does what it uh, what it needs to be done immediately because we are in a crisis. Yeah. I think it was Mitch McConnell in the Senate in the Senate said we're never going to get a better deal a deal than this in terms of the border yeah. the border stuff. So. Why not? And, and then the House, they're saying, no, 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 we're not so sure. But this is all posturing. Yeah. And the reason I think this is significant is because um, there are things that are held hostage to this bill. Yeah. Enough that there is enough pressure that this something will pass. Yeah. So what will pass? It may. So we're going to talk about the interesting employment-based aspects of this because they are really interesting and they're a little bit surprising. However, so, so we, before we jump yeah. in, I well, mean, yeah. also there's family stuff. Right? Oh, there's family. There's family stuff. Stuff as as, yeah. as well. I was going to basically, you know, qualify. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no. You're doing good. Go ahead. So, uh, but basically, understand that what we have here in front of us isn't necessarily the final form. There's some really neat and interesting stuff here, but you know, this is undergoing negotiation. I guess I, the last thing I'd say, Sam, before we kind of get into it is. There have been lots of, you know, proposed immigration re reforms, you know, they literally introduce one relating to the employment backlog, like, what, like once a month? And we don't really talk about that much because they don't seem like they're going anywhere. And I guess we're talking about this because this seems to be the best chance of actually happening that we've seen in a long time. And, you know, yeah. if I sound a little bit excited as, as it, about it, it's because it seems within in the realm of possibility. Yeah. So the, the first thing we need to share with you is this proposed bill, this bill, that is being proposed uh, has 250,000, quarter of a million additional green cards for employment and family immigration. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that is significant. Yeah, huge. Um, so of the 250,000, there is 90,000 
that go to, you know, to, to the employment To side. employment, yeah. immigration, and we're going to talk about that. Yeah. And it will uh, distribute those on a span of five years. Yes, sir. Starting next year. Yes. Uh, um, and then it has really neat stuff regarding protection for H-1B children. Oh, that's it. yeah, Child Status Protection Act revisions, modifications, essentially. Uh, massive modification, which has potentially a retroactive yeah, effect to basically, you know, yeah. somewhere somewhere out there, there's, and again, this is a law that may not come into be, but somewhere out there, there's a child who has been told, you're aged out of a green card, who this law could, in theory, undo it. Yes. You know, as, as we read it right now. What else we got there, uh, Ryan? So basically, um, you got some slide to show us here. Yeah. So let, let's go into, let's go into, first of all, the visa number allocation. Um, it does, it, and we, we, I mean, it may be worth it to even have a, a dedicated family immigration uh, session mm -hmm. to address the family stuff because there's a lot of family stuff. There's a fiance visa stuff. There is family, a, a new category, family to bring um, uh, fam family members. Family, family visas. There's so much to, to parse through, and they only gave it to us yeah. la last, last night. So, um, And yeah. also, the, the other thing I would like to kind of preface this, this is 13 hours ago. Um, so we basically looked at this last night and this morning, read through as much as we can to share with you this information. Yeah. Um, the final bill go into Congress and whether they vote on it and what will be in it could be completely different. It may, yeah. it, it may, yeah. it may be, you know, it, it can change. But coming out of the box from the president with both Republican, some Republican support, Democratic support, Today, this is what we got in a crash course that we've looked at it. And firstly, let's look at the family immigration and how it looks. Okay, so um, you want to pull up, pull up the- Yeah, your, let's put that in there. You want, to you want to pull up your, your, your detailed charts here as for the employment? Sure. Okay. Yeah, why yeah. not? That sounds so, like a good thing to instead of talking about the family, we're going to maybe talk about how these employment visas then are kind of yeah. give, given out. Yeah. So so what, we, what they've done, and this is uh, per year, and this is the employment. Yeah. Um, and what we got here is just to let you know how it's working. So there, there are increasing the number of green cards right. for employment by 18,000 mm -hmm. uh, per year for five years. Yeah. And if you look at the allocation, uh, the first preference gets one, 5,148 mm -hmm. new green cards, Brian. Mm -hmm. And again, I repeat, that is going to make the EB-1 probably incredibly attractive because the EB-1 uh, right now, if I remember correctly, for the uh, rest of the world is current. Yeah. Uh, so that 5,148, where is it going to jump on? Yeah, well, it should, it should be jumping to the most backlogged country of, you know, uh, India. Which is uh, India. Yeah, and I was looking, looking through this and I saw nothing in here that would indicate that those are stuck to a particular country. country. Not, yes, not in the bill as it stands now. There's nothing here, so we follow the old rules. So, yeah. so the allocation, the initial allocation is 360 uh, new green cards for India, 360 new green cards for China. Per country and, basis, yeah. Because by limited by the 7%. Yeah. And then the, there's 4,427 go to the rest of the world. Yeah. However, the rest of the world in, is, is current. Yeah, so in EB1, so if we go to the next, they are current. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. So what you got here is that the 4,427 4, green cards are going to flow to India and China. And then if they're unused, if they become current, Brian, they come down and they go to the EB2. Yeah. That has also their own set of, of yeah. 5,148 yeah. green cards. I guess maybe to sum up this chart, it's basically saying the if you look at the Visa Bulletin right now for the rest of the world, EB1 is current, EB2 is pretty darn close to current, maybe it's about a year, and EB2 2023 right now. 20, yeah. yeah. And EB, uh, EB3. Three is same. Yeah. Uh, basically, if these new visas can push those categories current, it means just more of them flow into the backlog to countries in those in categories. India initially, India. until India and China equalize, and then it will flow evenly yeah. to, to, to them. Yeah. Uh, so that's promising. And, and also, there's new green cards for EB3. Yeah. Now, EB3 doesn't get the benefit of flow down from the EB1 to EB2, but they have their own 5,148 yeah. green card per year. Yeah. So if you look at the total, Brian, in mm -hmm. the next slide. Let's see here. So the next slide gives you the total, which is 90,000. Mm -hmm. And if you move us 
you don't have to move the picture. Yeah. So there's 25,740 green cards for the EB1, which almost... That's over the course, this is over the course, course, course of, of five over years. Over the course of five years, yeah. yes. Yeah. Which almost probably is going to make EB1 current. Yeah. Probably, I, I, I'm not in the prediction business, but it probably will make it yeah. current or close to current for for everybody. I, I, w I would uh, I would hope. I mean, the bottom line, you know, I try to put these numbers in perspective. What's the normal employment-based visa availability? 140,000. Correct. Yeah. So I don't know. 90,000 visas is a gift. It's you know the vast majority of a year's worth of uh, visas. It's a bonus. Yeah. It's a bonus secret year. They they slide it. They yeah. slide in there. And if you go yeah. down to the next slide, I think it talks about yeah, the, how these things will, will roll we'll across. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll roll across. So so you got the 1,802 for India, the 1,802 on the span of five years, yeah. and you get 22,136 goes to the EB1, yeah, and you get. Uh, 22,136 going to the EB2, probably going to push, push the rest of the world current on those two, yeah. and probably even EB3, and then India will be the primary benefactor of oh, these new green cards. Are the most, yeah. most so over 75,000 green cards going to the EB1, EB2, yeah. EB3, if they're using the same allocation. Yeah. So headlines then, uh, number one is more, 90,000 more employment-based green cards over the course of, um, course of five years. The light, some of them will probably flow down, you know, into lower categories or flow across. But the bottom line is more, no matter what line you're in, more green card availability is good yeah. good for you. Yeah, you know? I'm, and again, employment-based. EB1, guys, if you are qualifying for EB1, we're seeing very, very positive uh, results from this administration on EB1. And people were a little bit discouraged because EB1 was retrogressed. Should this bill become law, and this bill is not law today, February 5th, 2024, yeah. uh, at 6 o'clock, it is not the law. Yeah. It's a bill released yesterday from the president and uh, uh, both a... Grown out of a bipartisan agreement, agreement between Democrats and Republicans in the Senate. It's something they think they could pass there, but with a major hurdle in terms of the House. And the hostage in it is money for Ukraine and Israel. Yes. Which, uh, which everybody wants to release. And basically, the Republican star that said... We're not giving you this money until we give you until you give us the wall the, the, the border the, the yeah. border bill yeah. and he gave them the border, border bill. bill and now some of them they're saying oh it's not good enough but all what you need is like ten or fifteen Republicans to go along obviously the House has to bring it to the floor which is the tougher the tougher yeah. test yeah. but there's a lot of challenges ahead of us. Yeah. Uh, but this is where yeah, it stands I mean, today. The bottom line is, we, the last time we had a really serious talk, a deep, deep down dive on any sort of immigration reform was probably what, like two years ago, yeah. uh, the, the reconcili reconciliation bill after right after Biden became uh, president, and the, we were, that was so close to, to passing. And you know, maybe this one's not not as far far as that. That was literally yeah. like yes. two votes votes away from passing. But again, when we when there's so, bills that have momentum, that's when we kind of get excited. So advantages, disadvantages, compare contrast for a moment. The previous bill um, got close, but it had problems because it was part of the uh, um, the budget bill. Yeah. And it had to pass uh, the um, the standard set forth in the budget bill. Yeah. And it didn't. A lot of the stuff didn't become. Yeah, they, yeah. There yeah. was there was there was that. And fundamentally, they just couldn't get the vo votes in yeah. the in the end. This is different. Yeah. Yeah. This is different. This is a bill that you need a single majority. There is no financial, and there's it's, it's a spending bill. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is not a budget bill. This is a spending yeah. bill. Yeah. All right. So that's one. Two, Brian. Let's talk about children of long-term. H-1B visa holders. Yeah. This is something very new. We haven't seen this before. Yeah, so uh, it kind of sort of, <laughs> kind of sort of modifies the Child Status Protection uh, Act and basically adds additional protections uh, underneath it. So essentially the headline for me, for me, and maybe you interpret it a little bit differently, is essentially if a child uh, has been in the United, if the, originally, the original H-1B petition for somebody was more than eight years prior, Despite the fact a child aging out, and I believe it says even if they're married, uh, they are allowed to basically get benefits under the Child Status yeah. Protection Act. Yes. So if, again, this is a bill, has not passed, just rolled out yesterday, less than 24 hours, and we're going through it for you. So it has rolled out some a surprise protection for children. Basically, what this bill said, in essence, Brian, if the child became on H-1B around the age of 13. That's the eight years. Eight years, yeah. Okay. Before they reach 21, yeah. 
and and they get eight years on H one B. H four, but yeah, uh, yeah. on uh, on H yeah, four, yeah. you know, through the parents H one B, and then there's an immigrant visa filed for the parents and the children are the beneficiaries. These children are locked for life to get a green yeah. card. They just have to uh, file for uh, file for a green card within two years of actually being eligible. Yes, yeah. they have to file their adjustment within two years of being current. Yeah, that's the only requirement. You and I are both going to say the same thing. You're going to say it better. Go no, for it. No, you're going to say it first. Um, talking about motions to reopen? Um, yeah, why not? Okay, so one of the really cool little things in, in there uh, seems to be that um, if somebody was denied a green card uh, or just uh, w was unable to uh, age out under the Child Status Protection Act, actually it speaks in terms of motion to reopen, so it has to be somebody who is actually denied a green card, right? It basically allows green card cases that have been denied pursuant to the old policy prior to this one going into effect, effect should it ever, basically allows those cases to be reopened by the government and those kids who they had told aged out actually can get given green cards under this policy as proposed. So what we call that? Motion to reopen. No, retroactivity. Retroactivity, sure. Retroactive effect. So it, it's retroactive. It's trying to grab kids that aged out in the past and get them green cards by filing a motion to reopen. Yeah. Not only does it do that, but also it gives them a work authorization. Yeah, while it's pending. You know, while it's pending. Yeah, we got to talk about work author authorization. So maybe we, we try this one up. Child Status Protection Act under this proposed bill modified basically if a kid has been here for eight years and there's an immigrant petition. Aggregate, through, yeah. They're locked in. Yeah, so let's assume aggregate. So let's assume you come here on an H-1B, your child was five years old and he gets on H-1B for like four or five years. You go back home and you come back and you put another four years, you hit aggregate of eight years, mm -hmm. that child, then you file an immigrant petition, that child is locked. Not only is he locked behind, that child can get married now. Yeah, they that's can, cool. They can know? get married and they can move on with their life and they still get green cards yeah. and get work authorization. Very cool. So they're saying we're going to try to fix this and recognize children who have been here for so long. And because these children are, for all practical purposes, they're American educated, the, their culture is here. Home is here for them. Yeah, home, sure. yeah. home is here. Yeah. So, so yeah, they're trying to protect it. This is a, a really nice uh, protection. If it passes, Brian, it hasn't passed yeah, yet, but I this is like, exciting. I, don't you feel obligated to repeat if it passes like yes. every, because we're talking about cool, exciting things. I don't want somebody yes. just to, to flip out, uh, flip out though. So yes. let's speak a bit of employment authorization, Sam. Let's talk about employment authorization, some uh, broader flexibilities uh, in, in yes. that. So, um, yeah. so yeah, so they basically said, uh, and correct me on this one, Brian, if, you're, if, I, if, I, if I'm wrong, they basically said if you file an I-140 petition, we are going to give the H-4 spouse and the H-4 children work authorization incident to the I-140. What does that mean? You don't have to file EAD anymore, and the children also get um, work authorization as well. So this is really great stuff. Yeah. Incident to the status. Status. Yeah, so no filing, no EAD yeah. applications anymore. Yeah. So spouses and kids of age fours work authorization pursuant to just being yeah. on the status, eliminating yeah. that category of EAD. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, these kids have spent significant portion of their life in the U.S. Uh, and it's just absolutely not fair. Oh yeah, to, they're, they're planning yeah. to go to go there. I don't know. They just want to have a, have a job. And, yeah. You know, um, they get deprived of yeah. that. They're deprived of that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there is a lot more to to uh, f to break down on this. I mean, uh, the, I mean, it's almost worth uh, doing a uh, section on uh, family immigration. Yeah, because I mean, there's some cool stuff in there. Uh, fiancés can can work a, a whole new category of. Uh, a visitor vi visitor visa for, for family, family for, for family, family visit, members visits, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but big picture some pretty neat stuff for employment based uh, immigration yep. and that's that yep so uh, wow we were able to stick it in in 20 minutes well, so this is exciting you know uh, there's some there's some you know big some some big headlines uh, here but you know it all comes with the asterisk of maybe whatever if something passes and is some whatever passes is it going to be this uh, version so, of it, Sam. So yeah. the politics of it, the politics yeah. of it is very dicey. It's yeah. high stake. Uh, president uh, Trump, um, or prior President Trump, who is running for president again, is opposing it. Yeah. Uh, because obviously it takes his thunder 
in terms of coming out well, with yeah. a solution? He likes to go out of the border, the border, the border. And if, you know, the other guy he's running against gets that, well, I fixed the border, uh, feather in my, in my cap. Uh, so he's opposing yeah, it. Yeah. Obviously, the far right uh, is opposing it. Um, well, they, what they want is they ha there's a bill out there called House Bill 2, I believe it's called, which they said, no, anything less than what we have in House Bill 2 is something that, w that we don't, don't want. That's sort of their dream version of it. Yeah. their dream version of a border border yeah. bill and, and you know a l long time ago i was told um, uh, the best definition of a compromise yeah. is when two parties are not happy yeah uh, if one is happy then it's not a compromise yeah and when you have a country like our country with a, a wide spectrum of uh, political views and opinions mm -hmm. okay the a good bill has to be in the middle yeah and this seems to be in the middle it has a, a lot of tough uh, provisions it toughens asylum applications which yeah. is a lot of people Ton, tons of hiring related to that i mean we haven't talked about this but tons of hiring related to that i mean i talked to somebody who recently who has had a pending asylum since like 2016 you know uh you know processing those things faster and is probably in many ways good it has sh a provision to shut down the border yeah if the number of undocumented claiming Entry to the United States to a number, yeah. a magic number of yeah. 5,000 and could be also 4,000 per day, yeah. which is, you know, right now it's averaging well, 8,000 yeah. per day, yeah. uh, which is a big problem. So this is something that he has and a few other things that he, there's, I mean, tremendous amount. It's $118 billion bill. This yeah, is ton, massive. Ton, yeah, I mean, there's tons, there's tons of provisions for it. It's hiring more, more officers to man the border, process asylum, you know, things, yeah. things like that, which is... Well, anyway, outside the scope of what we usually talk about here, but I guess I'd point out that the whole bill, was, I think, is like 370 or 340 pages, and the, all the stuff we just talked about was covered in only about 20 pages uh, yes. of, of it all. Yes, and, and, and you know, um, it's okay. We'll take the crumbs. We're not, we're not uh, greedy. I mean, I would like to have more green cards. I would like to have a better solution. But if they're able to resolve the border and control that, uh, maybe they can turn their attention to other stuff. Well, yeah. Uh, what is interesting about this, these 20 pages of employment-based stuff is this, I guess, is the best sig signaling we've had as to where a bipartisan position on fixing the visa backlog is, which is not as nice as we were hoping, you know, either changing it to, you know, uh, only count the primary person or basically that was kind of really, really the, the dream one or, or basically eliminating a lot of the other proposals like the Eagle Act and all the other ones were basically changing the per country limitation, raising it from like seven to 15, things like, things like that. But uh, this, is, this is surprising in that it's, it's, it is an increase in the visa availability, which is good for everybody in an employment-based uh, backlog, yeah. regardless of what country you're from. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we will keep an eye on it. Uh, I think Wednesday is going to go down on a vote with the Senate. They're not wasting time. Yeah. So the Senate wants to uh, put it to a vote uh, on uh, Wednesday. The expectation is going to pass the Senate mm -hmm. uh, because there's enough Democrats there to, to get it through, even there's not a it's Republican. A, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a bipartisan ag agreement, but yeah. yeah, yeah. You're going to get some Republicans uh, voting for it. So I think it's going to pass the Senate. Then it's going to go to the House. And that's where things are going to be interesting to watch, see what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, but uh, fundamentally, uh, this is gonna, I guess, you know, we were comparing it to the appropriations uh, reconciliation bill of a couple years ago. It's the sort of thing that will come down, it seems to the end, the number of votes it can get, you know, in, yeah, in, in I mean, the House. The, the it problem was the Senate last time, but it'll be the House this time. Yeah, yeah, the problem with the House is they may not even bring it to the floor. That's, that, 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 that's, and that's they it. don't bring it to the floor for vote. Okay. Yeah. The number of votes you can get in, get in a committee, perhaps, but yeah, uh, yeah that will yeah. be the challenge. Yeah. Uh, the challenge yeah. uh, there. Yep. But it's All right. Sounds good. So, this is the part of the presentation where we take your questions and answer them. Um, uh, just remember, don't uh, rely on what we tell you to make a decision on your life. Consult with a competent attorney before you make a decision. We talk here in abstract. We don't know enough about your case. We only know about three words. And we will try to ex extrapolate and fill in the gaps and sometimes change things, trying to kind of answer. Exhibit some nuance yeah. on the issues. Yeah, the fact that we can change, you know, micro facts and get different results is kind of... Highlights the point, point that yeah. really there's no... Don't, don't rely on what we tell you. But uh, we're here to answer the questions, give you some highlights, and help you out if we can. Cool. So let's start with the first question, Brian, here, without wasting time. Yeah, uh, from Akif. Um, my father was on H-1B and now has a green card. My brother entered at the age of 16 on, in 2011 on H-4 visa and is now on OPT. 
is he counted as a as a documented dreamer if the border uh, bill passes will he qualify Whew. so he's not a documented dreamer i don't believe yeah um, oh no i, I guess i document documented uh, dreamer i guess the kind oh. I, okay. I think it's a document sort of dreamer. Okay, sure. Uh, is yeah, 2011. Um, well, it doesn't have um, no. I don't think I, it doesn't look like it. Well, well, um, no, 16. age of 16 in 20, yeah. uh, 2011. But basically, his father. But he never filed for a green card in the end because basically all yeah. So so on the uh, this is a bill, yeah. and the final result will be significantly different or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, we we, do, but, we don't but, we don't know. Yeah. But based on what we read, it wouldn't appear that this case would fit with what we have right yeah. now, at least as I see it, Brian. Yeah, the, I, I would I would agree with you. The bottom line uh, for for our audience is, you know, not only is there going to be a law to interpret here, but there's going to be all sorts of government policy that goes with this. I mean, in the way the government chooses to interpret this law, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security does can impact the way it's uh, you know implemented. For example, a matter of policy in the last year or so, they changed and said, ah, we're going to go by the dates for filing for the Child Status Protection Act. And you know how the I guess the point is how the government actually actively interprets the law can really kind of impact on this. But I tend to agree with you that the problem I'm seeing is age of 16. You know? Yeah, I'm looking at him. I'm thinking about his question. It's hard to interpret any application to this bill right yeah. now. Uh, but this would not appear to me today, as I know it, to yeah. apply. But I can reserve the right to completely give you a different answer. Yeah, two I weeks, guess we're talking two about, weeks from now. Yeah, we're talking about this today because it is yeah. very interesting, and people have yeah. been are asking us about it already. But yeah. uh, when, it, generally speaking, when somebody tell, talks to me about a proposed bill, I would say don't you know count your he eggs. Don't try to apply it to your life until it is passed yeah. into law, yeah. and then then we will have uh, a lot to talk about for, for sure. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's keep it going here. Yeah. Uh, from a rule. Hello, thanks for doing this. My question, do I need to file I-45J in both EB-2 and EB-3 since I have it in both? Also, uh, can I use EAD from EB-2 and EB-3 if needed? Excellent question. Excellent question. So, uh, so let's play this out. Um, I'd like to know the supplement J need, did you change employment? Yeah. Uh, first of all, is my first question, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. so let's assume he's changed employment. Let's answer it in a changed employment scenario, right? Okay, sure. Okay, so right. make it easy. Yeah. So he moves into a different job. He has two I-485s, and now he wants to do supplement J. Yeah. Um, it's the same job description, Brian? Yeah. Okay. It's different, yeah. Yeah, same job description. Same job description. But the requirement for the job could be different. It could require bachelor's well, and yeah. five. So yeah, you're, t you're, you're, you're imagining perhaps two different labor certifications. Yeah, it could be two different yeah. labor certifications, I mean, two different jobs. For me, mm -hmm. uh, very simply, I know that on the Supplement J form, it asks you which I-140 you're referring to. It asks for a case number. And that would generate two different answers uh, on the Supplement J form. Uh, fundamentally, I'm kind of imagining a scenario where it's the same job uh, on the EB-2 and the EB-3 I-140s. But fundamentally- It could be different. Yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're entirely right. But no matter what, I think I would want to. I, I, it seems logical for a supplement J for both for both of them, if appropriate, because same or similar job class, classification becomes like a good, interesting question whether or not both are same or similar job classification. That's, they that's, they if, might be if they're different jobs. I see what you're saying. They could have different relationships to, to the to the job yeah, that you know yeah, you're currently yeah. switching to. Do you have to file if you want to save both of them? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and can you save both of them? Becomes. Yeah, the, when you, the when, devil when, that hides in the details. Yeah, how long was that I-140 approved before you left the yeah. company, uh, uh, for example? So, yeah, yeah that's, there the, is... A, the, the fact needs to be laid out. This is incredibly fact-specific, Yeah, and the answer will depend on your fact. Yeah. But I would like, my, I think the only advice I would give is I would like to be able to supplement J both of them, to keep both of them alive for yeah. you, because that would be really yeah. nice. And then... Now, from a strategy standpoint, maybe it is not a good idea. Maybe you have an employer A who you're oh, leaving, you, you, an employer well, B. Yeah, uh, spre it's called spread your spread your base. You know, don't rely upon one 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 employer. Potentially, keep, keep, keep your relationship with that prior employer open. Potentially, yeah. So, so this is a situation where you really, Rahul, got to talk to an attorney and just lay it out, get the facts together, and he'll go and ask you all these questions and be able to say. 
here's here's the best scenario for you. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's our answer, which is half answer, but that's the best. Oh we can no! Do. It just illustrates the point. Yeah. Real, lots of nuance there. Yes. So from uh, Ankit, uh, on cap exempt H one B beyond six years, I one forty approved the priority date of February twenty seventeen. I want to change job completely, to, uh, completely to a company. Uh, do I have to go through the lottery and wait until uh, October? So uh, I'm going to tell you how I interpret this, and my answer will reflect how I interpret this question. Hey, I've been in the United States uh, working for uh, one company. I've been here beyond six years, and I have an I-140 approval, and I want to join another company. And uh, the bottom line is no. Uh, once you've been through the lottery once, uh, you have. How about I explain the lottery a bit? But I think cap exempt H one B. I think the, one of them is a nonprofit. Oh, a cap. Oh. So one of the employer is a nonprofit, oh, well, and the other one is cap, cap subject. Cap exempt. I see. So I my uh, I, and that is a question was proposed before, and honestly, I w meant to research it because I at the top of my head, my answer is no. You cannot change job to a cap subject yeah. from a cap exempt, even if you have an I one forty approved. I don't yeah. think that takes yeah, that, away. Yeah. The additional years, I think, yeah. it all follows. Yeah. So I don't see that yeah. uh, to be the case. Uh, that's my answer without researching it, to be yeah. honest with you, because I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. I th that your your answer is what makes makes sense to me. If I were betting betting on what we'll what we'll find to do that research, is yeah, there's no way that the cap is being removed yeah. because the I-140 is approved. They're not related. Yeah. It's, because all what the I-140 does, it lifts the, the lift six-year limit. It doesn't say anything else. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Vishal. Yeah. Hi guys. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. I'm gonna uh, go to India. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to India for 30 days. I have a conditional green card. What document do I need to carry with me? So conditional green card can be given in one of two scenarios, Brian. One is family marriage, oh, the other one is EB-5. Uh, doesn't matter regardless, a conditional green card has a green card with them, okay, and has a date on it. And as long as you're entering the U.S. before the expiration date of that green card, all what you need is your valid passport and your green card. Yeah. You don't need anything else. Yeah. For your permanent resident. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm going to... Okay. Uh, this question, uh, I think somebody somebody asked one before, but let's see what it is here. Uh, from Enkit, I have an I-140 approved one plus year. Can I switch to a new job, new title within the same company? And do I have to have new H-1B perm uh, I-140 or just an amendment? So. Good uh, question yeah. to start with. Okay, so maybe start with the H-1B. If you want to move to a new job in the same company, uh, same company, do I need a new H-1B? Most, most like, likely, uh, yes. Probably yes, because it's a new job, different yeah. job description. Yeah. If, it, if, it, if there's a material major change in your job that you're making the transition, you know, there you go. And if you considered a job change, I bet your employer and its immigration council would as well, and thereby I would recommend doing an H-1B amendment yeah. is, is that one. Yeah. Uh, now, PERM and, uh, well, PERM, uh, PERM and I-140, I guess we can kind of wrap those, uh, those together. But uh, a PERM and I-140 are going to describe a specific position, you know, uh, that says, you know, you're going to be a, I don't know, a research scientist, and, and, that's, and that's sort of it. If the job is no longer the same on the PERM and I-140, I would basically, uh, the conversation I would have with the employer probably would look like this. It would be, okay, you have documents that say you're going to be hiring, you know, so-and-so as a research scientist. Uh, is your company going to be doing that? Uh, any, any further? And if the answer is no, uh, my answer would be, you know, you're looking at a new permanent I-140. I'm going to argue the other side because we're lawyers and okay. we have to argue the other side for their benefit. Yeah. So I would say, is the job a career progression? If it's a career progression, USCIS recognizes that long pending green card applications, it is normal to go through a career progression. And if it is a progression within your career, you know, it could be a new job, but now you are kind of a senior and it is within that progression, it is very possibly acceptable. So we got a careful look at this new job, and the prior job, and whether or not the new job is a career progression from the prior I job. Will, I will, well, there's career 
progression. That's a uh, that's a big a big that's a wide open open phrase. You know, I guess the answer is you know, can you still offer? Is it still essentially you know? Is it materially the same the same job? So if you're a research scientist yeah. and then you become a res a, a research scientist supervisor, uh, I'm going to have to argue that this is potentially a career progression. And if it's in the same SOC code or the same family codes, it's it's in the memo of same or similar job classification. Yeah, but this person doesn't have a pen pending uh, pending green card as I'm reading reading the uh, reading the facts. Same or similar job uh, occupation applies when you're engaging in portability. There's no portability before. Uh, if, before you file, you so file you're it. saying that career progression is acceptable after you file the uh, file the R45, but not before. I mean, I mean, I think you have a basically a bit of wiggle space in the the terms. Because of it doesn't day. make to me my counter on that, but I see your point. I, well, no, I see your point. Yeah, but yeah. for me, how can career progression begins after the I45 but doesn't before? It makes no sense. Oh, However, I, I, I see your I point. agree. It makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when you sign off that on that, the I forty five J is when you file this I forty five application. You're signing up the employer, and you sign off an I forty five J saying, "Here's the job that's offered, and here's the, the here's and I'm agreeing to take that." And yes. How do we? How, how do you complete that supplement, Jay? It's gonna, it should reflect what's on your uh, I one forty. And if you put something different there, well. Um, well, so I think I think at the moment you file the I-45 yeah. where you need the supplement J, you enter the conversation. What you're doing yeah. for your company and uh, what the job description is, and you're going to engage a lawyer to look at it for you to see whether that's reasonably or does it have deviated such yeah. that it's impossible. And you could enter an agreement with your employer and say, I'm going to continue with this job, for but sure. when the green card is approved, I'm willing to take the old job. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's 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 the conversation. It might be other have my but my conversation with employers. Can you can you the company offer in good good faith that you're still willing to offer you know so and so this position as it is in your I-140 uh, and labor certification? Furthermore, yeah. furthermore, adding to this because this is an excellent point and I li I like this discussion because it gives people the insight. And the other thing I would look into it is whether or not um, it makes sense. To do another permanent I-140 oh, without sure. abandoning the first one, sure, yeah. Because you know you get an I-140, uh, and if you feel like you know you get plenty of time, and you feel like yeah, it's gone way off, and I really don't want to go back to this old job. Um, sure, redo yeah. that labor certification. So yeah. yeah. So again, this is a conversation with your lawyer. Um, a lot of these things are a a discussion and hinges on the job description, how far off it is. The direction you're heading. Yeah, I mean, there, there are there are situations where your version wins out. And my, I remember that there's a guy who lives in my mind. Basically, he, they, this employer did his green card like you know ten years prior. He was like a computer programmer, and by the time he, he was getting close to ready for, ready for a green card, he was you know their vice president of something. Yeah, something. that's completely new yeah, labor yeah, certification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 that's really really yeah. really kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, I agree. It, yeah, I yeah. agree. So, uh, next one we have here is from uh, Arindam Malankar. All right, so I worked for IT multinational company 16 months in Bangalore, India. Relocated to USA on L1B visa through the same company on October of 2020, 2013. Mm. Okay, so he had one year abroad. Yeah, and, and, and came I here on an L visa. Yeah, L1B, so, yeah. so there's a qualifying relationship. Then, subsequently, the company did my H1B and PERM. I wonder why they switched into H1B, but we're not going to ask. Maybe running out of time on an L1. Uh, yeah, maybe you run out all the L1. Or versatility of work. You can yeah. send somebody to a client site on an H1B, you know? Yeah, good, yeah. good answers. Yeah. Uh, on EB2, uh, and my party date is June 2015. I am still working in the same company. All right. Okay. Excellent. I know where he's heading. Yeah, me too. With yeah. the background, can I do EB1C in functional manager category now? Appreciate. Uh, if you can let me know. Well, so, where is where is the uh, catch for you? Uh, I would question what kind of role this individual is working on abroad. Yeah. Um, the rules for uh, it's not the matter of time that I'm worried about. It's uh, the what kind of role were you Level working? Responsibility. Working abroad. The role, the basically the rules for an EB1C are working as a manager or executive abroad and doing the same in the United States. And that's what I'd ask about that 18 months or 16 months, whatever it is in Bangalore, what were you and, doing there? And obviously the L1B gave you the discomfort yeah. because I would be very much interested to see this L1B petition yeah. Yeah. because what is represented, now I'm, I mean, I'm 
very much interested to know what you did in the oh, 16 yeah. months, but I am also equally interested to, to read what the petition yeah. says, and I'm hoping they're the same. Yeah. Well, but, but, but you got to look at both. Yeah. But the bottom line, I guess, is like, you know, uh, can, well, Sam, can you go back, you know, however many years now and say, no, if the petition said that I was a specialized knowledge guy or gal abroad, and, you know, and then I was going to be doing that in the United States. Can you go back and re-argue that again, you know, 10 years later that, oh, I really was a, a, a functional manager uh, while I was ab abroad or a manager while I was abroad? I mean, not impossible, Brian, but yeah. it is not, an uphill not, battle. Well, not impossible if the, the documentation supports it. See, yeah. but if the documentation doesn't support it. You're not going to create the documentation. This yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, the the thing that would stress, like if if I was doing a, con a consult with somebody on this, I'd say, "Wow, you're telling me how many years ago that that was? 2013? You were you were abroad?" I'd say, "That where are you going to find that evidence, my, well, my not, friend?" Well, not only in where are you going to find the evidence, Brian. Uh, he was probably a young engineer or a professional. It's very unlikely he's taking a managerial role of any kind at that time. Yeah. He's just young. He's just out of the college for two or three years, you yeah. know. And what is well, you don't tell me he's a manager. Are you it's kidding? It's theoretically me? possible. You're allowed to go from a managerial role abroad to a specialized knowledge uh, role in the United States and go from a specialized knowledge role to a managerial role in the United States. But the rules for EB1C is must be manager executive abroad, manager executive in the United States and that's so. that's really uh Really, where, where I was. So, so the theory supports it. The practicality raises a lot of doubt. Yeah, for me, I just wonder if the fact the facts are yeah. there. And I'd say if somewhere out there is an L1B saying definitely this person was of a specialized knowledge uh, role abroad, it would be a unique challenge to come back and change that narrative yes. uh, years down the road. I agree. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the next one. A good question, though. A fun yeah. one for for yeah. us. Yeah. Nishab. Is there an interview for employment-based green card? Maybe. So. One word answer from, from Brian. Very rare. Yeah. So it's uh, discretionary, yeah. right? There was a time where everyone had an interview, and then they said no, and now they came back on discretionary, and now they're kind of funky in the way they do it. Yeah. Um, no guarantees. Some people, uh, but basically. Um, there are certain things in your case where an attorney can probably tell you, oh yeah, you're gonna get, get an interview for that. Typically criminal stuff is the most, in, interesting criminal cases will get you an interview. But don't assume, because you're getting an interview, you're in trouble. Yeah. Um, they're looking into something, but sometime USCIS walks by and they see the shadow on the wall and they investigate the shadow. Yeah. They arrest the shadow, they put him down and they interview him because it's like, I don't know what they're on sometime. It doesn't make well, sense. So the, they interview people when the priority date is not current, and they go through the case as if like they're deciding the end of the world, whether it's gonna happen tomorrow or not, and they are completely off base. Uh, so yes, there's an interview. Uh, yeah, you, you don't know until, until there's a green card in your, in your hand. Yeah. Uh, there's an interview, but a lot of it don't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's that's the uh, short answer there. Yeah, yeah. From Ramesh, my priority date for 2012 is current in EB3, but my downgrade request is pending for nine months. When I called USCIS, they, they say there's no processing time for I-45J. Uh, what is my next step? So, basically, it sounds like you've been current. So, as I interpret this, it's I put in a tub request uh, nine months ago when my priority date became current in EB3. And uh, is did probably did, 2012 is current? I think no. Well, how long has it been been current? Has it been current since for the last nine nine months? Excuse me while I look at the visa uh, bulletin uh, here because I thought it's pretty close to 4 2012, but maybe I'm thinking it. So for the February 2024 visa bulletin, uh, let me see here. Um, we are in uh, EB3. Foundation. We are in July 20, 2012 uh, for EB3, presuming somebody's from India, and I would presume so. So I'm going to go back, I don't know, maybe. So what's it, what's it now? What, what, what's the date he has? He has or April. 20, April 2012. So we're only Ju July. So, so, so it's current. Yeah, but here's, here's my concern. That, was it current at the time? Yeah. Uh, the rule is you're for. It has to be current. So maybe let's put us all together. 
So go back, go back, do it. So we're going to look at a piece of bulletin from nine months ago. How far is nine months ago? Let's go five uh, months ago. Let's go back to, to October 2023. So uh, nine months ago, Brian, is uh, July. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to round up and go to uh, August 2023. Fair enough? Sure. And in August 2023, uh, final action date for India EB... Uh, EB uh, yeah, it was current. Oh, no. no, it wasn't. It was in January 2009. So let's 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 start stop going. Uh huh. Oh oh. Between us and, and answer the question. The concern I have is that tub request, if you're presuming it was a tub request, would, might be ill filed because the ill considered because the priority date was not current at the time it was submitted. So it, there is a likelihood that your request was improper because, uh, and again he he said nine months ago. If nine months ago. For 2012 was current final action date, then your tub request is valid. Yeah. If not, then your tub request is not valid. Yeah. And now, if he's current, he needs to file a new one. Yeah, that would, yeah, I mean, so I don't get the impression that USCIS puts, this is uh, seven months, eight, nine months ago, I went back to July, and that's still in January 2009, so it wasn't current then. I don't get the impression that USCIS, every time they get a tub request, they put in, you know, major analysis uh, into it. They, that they, I could say, are actively trying to enforce that policy, right? But I guess, you know, if you put in a tub request, uh, well, I would say it doesn't hurt to send it, again, send it again. It's already written, essentially, right? Well, the question is, was your tub filed properly or not? That's a critical question, yeah. because if it's filed properly, um, maybe you're in the ground of that you need to put some pressure. Yeah. If it's not filed properly, you need to fix this quickly. Yeah. That's really the bottom line. Yeah. I, even though I don't imagine the average, you know, USCIS officer catching that, oh, technically his priority date wasn't current when you filed the tub. Maybe they, they, they could, though. Uh, I'd say in a court case, perhaps, if you tried to, like, sue the government over that, I think that something like that might, might they, come they out. They won't even catch it then. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that the, the government lawyer you're dealing with isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to know that, but, yeah. You know, but it could be you could waste a lot of time and money if they catch it. Yeah. Uh, so fix it if you can. Yeah. yeah. But um, hopefully, hopefully uh, it was current. An interesting uh, question. But if it's so. current in nine months, Brian, I time to turn the heat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from Emily, uh, how will, US, will the new H1, USCIS H1B register work for individuals with dual citizenship, that is two legal passport numbers? If two different employers enter them in the lottery, uh, do they get uh, two chances? So they announced, so they had some, I don't remember what the final solution to, the, to this uh, was mm -hmm. in the proposed uh, reg regulations. It's impossible from a database standpoint for them to flag it. Yeah, you, entirely right because... I mean, the date well, of birth, could, name, first name, last name matching. Yeah, first... So I bet they can. I'd say, okay, so two people named John Smith with the same birth date, uh, they might be able, born in the same... in the same, Both born in, say, I don't know, the United Kingdom. Uh, they might be able to, to figure that out based upon... Database sniff sniffing, uh, I, I would say, yeah. Um, but let's put it that way. Um, if it's their error, it's their error. Yeah. Um, now, if it is done purposely... Yeah. Yeah, I guess um, they, did, they did announce the changes to the H-1B registration program, and we were more interested in, the, in today's topic than, than that right, right if now. If the so person is in the U.S., yeah. they must use the passport that they've used to enter the U.S. That's by law. Great point. That's because yeah. you only have one citizenship in the U.S. Yeah. If the person is abroad, it poses a more complicated question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't, for anybody who's, who's out there who thinks they've beaten, they've beaten the system, I would say the system might come and beat you. Uh, well, uh, don't, I mean, you know, the it, consequences yeah, are yeah, yeah, don't, don't, too silly. Don't screw around with, with the uh, Too, with too the silly to do that. It's yeah. not worth it. Yeah. Explore Dreamer. With a new bipartisan act, yeah. 18... Thousand EB visas is additional. How much per year in India will go? Yeah, is it seven percent on eighteen thousand? Uh, Scroll, dreamer, you must have missed the first five minutes. Yeah. Uh, so Go we, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we kind of talked about that a little bit. So uh, the number is eighteen thousand new employment-based visas. Three sixty. Three hundred sixty. Yeah, per cut on a per country basis. What do you yes. do the math? Yeah. Then you got the cross flow. And the downflow. So there's in five years more than seventy-five thousand green cards, which we believe eventually 
a significant portion of them will go to uh, India because they are most backlog the countries. countries. Yeah, yeah. That's the bottom line is, yeah. like we were talking earlier, one of the surprising things about this bipartisan agreement is it doesn't muck with the visa allocation numbers, such as the 7%. Yeah, it doesn't it, do any it of that. Just it just adds more visas to the stack and allocates them the same yeah. way as they are under yeah, the law. 90,000 green years. cards extra. Over five years. Yeah. Uh, and we'll probably push EB1, EB2, EB3, rest of the world current, most likely, probably. Uh, and that means India be the second most benefited country after the rest of the world. Yeah, until they get, they get, they yeah, get everything. Ahead of today, China. Yeah. Until, the, until they equalize. EB1 is going to be the most significant benefit because EB1 probably, probably they're going to become EB1 and the rest of the world is already current. So basically all the new bonus stuff that gets tossed in there will get tossed get in, dumped India, into in, in, in India. India. Yeah, first, yeah. India, and then, and then, then China then make new visas, and then yeah. we always talk about as soon as China gets, you know, but the India backlogs are so much worse. But but not for yeah. EB one. Yeah. yeah so good. yeah. So if you're if you qualify for EB one, are we still doing the uh, no cost uh, evaluation, Brian? For a short period of time, we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might we we might stop that during the H one B cap. Yeah, we we get that. Uh, but uh, we haven't got. Bit, yeah, we, busy, have, uh, there, we sure. haven't stopped it yet. Yeah, so. yeah. I was looking at the EB one numbers numbers here for China. It's you know about a yeah, it's still pretty pretty deep about a year and a half. Whereas you know India is in September twenty twenty. So yeah. yeah, but yeah, but. It is a potential to really move those numbers forward, which is great. I have plenty of people in my... You know, EB1 is going to be very, very important. Yeah. I, I have uh, a lot of people who are hoping. Yeah, I can think of somebody right now who's hoping that yeah. you know, his son gets to get counted yes. in his uh, EB1 uh, yes. for sure. Yeah. So I'm going to keep on going here from Raul. Can I use EAD from EB2 and EB3 if, uh, if needed, if for some reason one's renewal get stuck. If both are valid and both offer of employment remain valid, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't really argue uh, argue with that, yeah. I like to argue. So, yeah. um, so uh, kind of another question for Explorer or Dreamer, who's uh, on the very much on the visa potential reform topic here. Sure. With approved I-140 India in 2015, close to 50,000, including the family factor of 2.2, 110,000 green card visa is needed to close all the 2015. Uh, even with these bipartisan act, is not going to help India. Well, it's not going to going to help everybody. It's it going to help, help somebody. somebody. Yeah. So yes, I mean you 90, know 90,000 visas over you know, over five years. If you if you knock off 20 percent of it, that's wonderful. Yeah. 25 percent, I'll take it. 15 yeah. percent, I'll take it. I mean, I, yeah, I would have loved to have more, yeah. but you know that's what they yeah, got. Yeah. I mean, again. Uh, this is interesting because this is what a bipart what a negotiated big high attention maybe is a chance it could pass. They everybody in the Senate thought the House might might take it. Obviously, they're kind of you know, but this is what a bipartisan agreement on this topic looks like uh, yeah. right now. Yeah. I understand it's probably d d disappointing in that way. And and to emphasize the point of 2015, priority dates made it to January well, 1st, 2015, and that's where. But here's the know. good news: yeah. there's nothing to be disappointed about. You know why? It's just a bill. It's just a bill. And if they passed it, you really cannot be disappointed. Yeah. So we can, we're, we're such a bad shape, Brian. Any change is a positive movement. We cannot be disappointed yeah. on we, any we positive were, movement. We were calling this crumbs as we were talking about this this afternoon. And it kind of, again, it's $118 billion yeah. bill. Yeah. Well, if, if they could, if they, uh, if Congress could spend away the immigration backlog, they'd certainly do it. But if, but all they got to do is change a couple, couple letters and letters and numbers in the law, and that's the impossible, the impossible part uh, for them. But I hope it passes. I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna be upset. And if it does, if, and yeah. then we'll fight for more opportunities. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if you get more, more opportunities. It, it, you never know. Yeah. I, I mean, I worry about them patting themselves on the back, saying we did it. We fixed employment, immigration. The number you know? of opportunity between zero and five. I'd like to take one right yeah, now. Yeah, I will take I will take whatever whatever we can and get. And then I'll go in for the next one. You're, you're right. It's a little bit maybe uh, depressing for somebody with a 2016 priority date. For for those in the, in the 2015 range, uh, and those heck those who are in 2014 who's who have pending adjustments, it may help them out. Yeah, big. Yeah. And if you're EB1, uh, you probably get get your green card. Yeah. So a bit of more commentary from what's the best approach for a person of Indian origin in USA with 2015 priority date? And after you know years, I honestly think you know there were conversations. You know, it's the it's the uh, it's the chasing, chasing the um, uh, you know 
shadows and and you know smoke screen things that you see in the dark uh, whether or not there's going to be reform mm -hmm. everybody's saying you know the chance of immigration reform in the next two years is five ten percent but the next five years is more than fifty percent but the next five years never comes mm -hmm. so um, we need reform there's no question we need reform and um, uh, it, it's it, one day we're going to have a president and Congress aligned and interest at the same time because we've had these opportunities. Obama wasted all his time on Obamacare and did not invest in immigration. We had yeah. opportunities during his time. Uh, the Biden status had quo a was maintained. Really narrow window of opportunity, yeah. you know, so yeah. we'll see. Uh, I'll answer his question uh, differently. Uh, EB1 if you can make it, EB5 if you got the money, and this is the depressing version. Well, if you're in the United States and you have kids, those kids are going to be born in the United States, they're going to be U.S. citizens. Uh, if, it gets so, if it gets so bad, by the time they're, they're, 20, they're 21, they can sponsor uh, you. Really, we don't have many H-1Bs, you know, end up, end up that way, but, uh, you know. Not yet. Yeah. It's probably coming. Give, give, give it, give it some, some time. No, I, I guess I like it when family immigration offers a solution to somebody, but it's not the way I want it. To, I don't want it to offer a solution to employment Im immigration. And this bill also uh, does this, the the uh, Child Status Protection Act extended for children, which is wonder, yeah. which is a good thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's see here. So uh, from Emily, Iran and Brazil, according to USCIS, had eleven twenty five and. 1,405 approved, new I-140 last year. That's These numbers, uh, oh yeah, probably. Uh, these on NIW I-140 that last year, and these numbers don't include dependents or regular EB-2 if this training continues. Will they be given separate uh, charge ability? Um, in, terms, in terms of, I mean, they already are given separate, separate charge, uh, charge ability is the, uh, is the bottom line. It's basically whether or not um, that impacts the, uh, I guess I guess it kind of it kind of has to has to uh, eventually, right? Well, um, it all depends on the math. What's a uh, seven percent of one hundred forty thousand? Yeah, um, you got to hit that number. I forget that number. Four thousand, I think. Uh, it's where I, pr I prove I'm a lawyer, not yeah. a mathematician. But uh, yeah, point so zero seven star. Oh, yeah, it's not taking. Oh, uh, point zero seven times one hundred forty thousand. Well, that did, <laughs> you got a zero. Yeah, I, had, I had a zero, a zero on the beginning. Well, okay, point uh, zero seven times one four zero one two three. I should have done this with the keyboard. Ninety eight hundred. That sound right? Yeah. So, oh, the the, the times two point times twenty eight percent. Oh uh, yeah. Times point two eight. Uh, times point two eight. No, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Ninety eight hundred. Okay. Uh, so this keyboard is not is not being uh, it's. Here, number lock. Here we go. Nine eight zero zero. There it is. Times 0 0.28. 2,744. So you're not reaching. So you're in the 50 percent of that number. Yeah. So until Brazil reaches 2,744, EB. Well, that's the national interest waiver. That's not counting labor Everybody certifications. Else, yeah. So, well, I mean, obviously we need more number, more information. But the magic number is 2,744 um, EB2s to have your own. Yeah, uh, category. Yeah, that will. Yeah. And Elmina's follow-up cup is there seven percent cap, twenty eight hundred. Well, clearly, yeah. clearly, uh, twenty seven. Yeah. yeah, not exactly, but pretty darn close. Good calculating, Emily. Yeah. You uh, know, uh, from Arindam. Um, so, uh, my friend was born in India, but worked in the Netherlands for twelve years and became a Dutch citizen. Later moved to the USA through the same company uh, on twenty nineteen. Uh, uh, for L-1B visa, can he be eligible for d diversity uh, uh, visa? DV visa, I presume. So means. all the background you gave me has nothing to do with diversity. Diversity has nothing to do with how many work. It doesn't work with L-1B. It basically diversity visa is your uh, your place of birth uh, and a published uh, number. You can find it on the visa bulletin. Uh, typically, diversity visa is focused on um, countries with low number of immigrants to the U.S. Um, so you got to look that up in the visa bulletin, uh, but it has nothing to do with any of the background. It's place of birth, and whether that country. Yeah, place of oh yeah, place of birth is born in India, and thereby yeah. you know. The, the, never, they will never do the diversity because for there's India. so much many people yeah. coming from India in yeah. the other categories. So so not likely. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that's sort of the uh, same questions there. Let's check this one out. 
Uh, question on India chargeability, EV1C. You're thinking on final action date advancement as the quarter changes after March. Do you see uh, uh, us getting to 1st of September 2020? So, um, maybe the question is, do you see 1st of uh, see first of it, where do you see advancing it advancing to? to? Oh, I see. Um, we, we're not going to predict at 7 o'clock, Brian. Well, Are you, do you want to predict? Well, Go for it. I will, I will get out my crystal ball, and by crystal ball, I mean look to the dates for filing. And I'd say uh, I see EB1 India dates for filing as of February 2024 saying uh, 1st of January 2021. So I would say that uh, until we learn more about how they're running the Visa Bulletin in the next quarter, I had to presume that, you know, that's where we can get to within this fiscal uh, year. Until January 1st, 2021. Until, we, until they start moving it, yeah. January 1st, 2021. Yeah. Um, all right. Sounds good. So we'll take one more, 701. Yeah, and uh, we're pretty close to the end of our questions here anyway. Uh, there we are. Peter Smith, go for it, Brian. Do you see trends with I-485s in case remains, pen remains pending? How long for approval once current? I-485 filed 13 months ago, EB2, rest of the world, uh, priority date of August 2022, retrogressed but current since January 1st, 2024, and still pending. I, I don't know if I, I can see a trend. I, I, I don't see a trend. Yeah. Do you? I don't, I, don't, no, I, don't, no. I don't think of trend usually. No, my honest answer would be um, I don't really think about, about trends in that, that way. We kind of take every approval as they, as they come, and very rarely is it useful for us to mine our own you know, approval uh, data. To have a trend. Yeah, yeah. frankly. Li life's too short. I mean, I, we, got, we got bigger fish to fry every day as we practice law. We really don't go back and yeah. look at trends. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Uh, my uh, thought is 13 months ago, um, Based upon where your case is, it literally that may be still well within normal processing times, you know, for uh, for U USCIS. But it doesn't mean that you cannot go after them because, um, I mean, I hope you only don't current to only current for a a month. But I would, I mean, look up look up where your case is, and USCIS publishes processing times on their website. And I would bet that you're probably within normal processing t times. Should I look, Sam? Should yeah. I look? Should this be the last thing we do? Sure. I, uh, USCIS.gov. Uh, we're going to go to their processing times. Check your processing times on their website. I think they said 18 months last time I checked. Yeah, I think, I mean, it depends it, on the service center, too. Yeah, but it's, I'm going to presume you're not going to get the, uh, the local field office uh, times, and thereby, uh, you know, I'm going to look at the, probably the and NBC would be my best, my best uh, guess. If the uh, website chooses to load for us, and yeah. if the website doesn't choose uh, to load for us, so I would encourage you all to go to the, to the USCIS yeah. uh, website and yeah. check your processing times there. It's not loading, so. Yeah. All right, so with that, guys, thank you so much for listening to us, and we will keep, yeah, it looks like it's uh, down. Down, I guess it's, af yeah. it's after after dinner time. That's when everybody lo logs yeah. in to uh, go yeah. ahead and yeah. uh, check their case status. And uh, we'll keep our eye on this uh, new law. Um, we'll, we will take the extra 90,000 green card for employment if yeah. uh, Congress have the decency to pass it. And uh, you guys have a, a wonderful rest of the week. We'll see you Monday at...